let's do this. Uh, they've given me a microphone, which is a first. Um, I've never used one, so this could be dangerous. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty interactive. If you've got any questions, please ask as I go on, because I tend to repeat myself or go in no chronological order, so it could be here, there, and everywhere. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm Sam Brand from the Isle of Man. I'm a professional cyclist with Team Nova Nordisk. Um, we're a team of 16 professional riders um, racing across the globe. Does anybody know anything about cycling, professional cycling? Cycling to work, anything? <laughs> Well, we race in the pro continental ranks, which is one below uh, World Tour, which is the highest echelon of professional cycling. We race with the best in the world. Yes, I've raced against Chris Froome. So that's what my mom cares about anyway. Um, I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes at 10 um, on World Diabetes Day. So um, 14th of November 2001, um, my mom was watching the news. Uh, I think Steve Redgrave was on. And, she saw the symptoms that he was discussing with the news reporter, and they were the same symptoms. So um, I tend not to go back to anything before there, because for me, I was diagnosed at 10. That's where life began. Um, I don't remember a day without diabetes. I don't remember a day without injecting, which doesn't faze me at all. It, it's not a problem. I mean, um, I can sit here and tell you how great it is to be type 1 diabetic, but realistically, it's individual for everyone. Um, I had such a pleasure listening to my fellow speakers this morning. Uh, everyone's had a different experience with diabetes. Um, mine is nothing but I want to do what I want to do, whether diabetes just has to suck it up, you know. Um, I grew up on the Isle of Man. There's not many places you can get lost. I mean, it's what, 40 miles by 12 miles. So um, I was given pretty much free reign by my parents. Uh, they wanted to be part of that, but I was allowed to go and get dirty and hang around with mates. It took me till about 15, 16 to realize that the support I was getting from my parents, I couldn't have lived without. They took on so much when I was diagnosed. My dad hated needles, still hates needles, so it's pretty much my mum. Uh, but their influence and their guidance has been so helpful. I got to 15 and all my mates were starting to go out and I was like, well, hold on. like." They do one injection a day for me at that time. And for me, I wanted to go out. So that's when I sort of like, okay, right now is where I embrace it. This is me. This is, this is it now. Um, so I accepted it. At that time, I was a cross-country runner. Um, I come from a running background. Um, just to really blow smoke up myself, I've run 10K in 31 minutes. So for anyone who's done 10K, it's... Um, pretty fast, I think. So um, <laughs> I was a bit of a runner, but I also played football, and that was my sport. But I was a goalkeeper. So it kind of like, well, you stand in goal all day and don't do anything, but then you go and run like 10K like really fast. So I kind of had a decision to make. Um, I took a gap year before I went to university. I didn't really know where I wanted to do or what I wanted to do. I had a, an idea that I wanted to be a quantity surveyor. Um, I did some work experience. Um, carried on playing football and I was sort of like a bit fed up of football so I got to university and as a, as a child I'd competed in sort of junior triathlon but with it being a new sport um, it kind of left me with one opportunity a year to race so I was just doing everything a kid did, tried to do every single sport I could and then not only do it but win at every single sport because no one likes a loser. Um, so yeah. Um, that was really where I got to. And then my dad had competed at an uh, age group level triathlon um, whilst I was growing up. So that's kind of something I thought, well, if I go to university, my parents are going to be worrying about me all the time. But if I use my diabetes as a regime, which when I was diagnosed, I was given the best regime ever. It gave me a focus. It gave me something to wake up, something to do. So I had everything split up, everything lined out, and everything was wonderful. It gave me this positive out of potentially a negative. And I went to university, um, I started triathlon. Um, within one year, I qualified to represent Great Britain at the World Championships. I raced my first World Championships in Hyde Park in 2013. Um, posted a photo, uh, the team got in touch. And then in 2015, the following year, they tried to get me to, oh, 2014, sorry, they tried to get me 
to come out and join the development team. One year left of my degree. Sensible Sam won. Sensible Sam said, you need to finish your degree because your parents will kill you. Um, <laughs> so I finished my degree. Um, my degree in quantity surveying, which is not sporty at all. Um, then I moved out um, to America to have a trial with Nova Nordisk. Um, I got the job. Uh, within 18 months, I'd signed my first professional contract. In 2018, um, I went to the Commonwealth Games, um, represented the Isle of Man um, out in Australia, which was unbelievable. I crashed out. <laughs> but that's part of the experience, you know. I cycled some random Australian's bike around for two laps because my parents were at the finish and I didn't want them to not see me come past. So uh, it was a story, you know. It, it's, it's nice uh, to see 200 Australians trying to offer you a beer instead of a bike. But <laughs> it was uh, a great experience, to say the least. Um, so that's where we are now. I've just finished Milan San Remo. Um, for those in cycling know, uh, it's the biggest one-day race in the world. 300 kilometers, 185 miles. We did it in less than seven hours. It was, um, it was tough, but um, if some of you might have seen my CGM trace online, uh, it wasn't the most straightforward of days. Uh, I hit 20 numerous times, um, but um, that is experience, you know. Um, I don't, I can't just say what happens in 10 minutes isn't what's happening now, so I can't just stop because diabetes says, oh, you're a little bit high. So for me, it's, you know, controlling the situation. You know, and I was just saying to myself, listen, don't worry. You know how to deal with every situ single situation. We all do, and you need to be brave. Um, be positive, because if a situation happens, you've done it 100 times, if not more. So you know what to do in every situation, but you just have to be brave enough to put that into whatever situation you're in then. Everything can be managed, everything can be, be done. Just be brave, you know I mean? For me, um, it's not about, I want to be a professional cyclist. Diabetes doesn't even come into it at all. I want to be a professional athlete. That is all I've ever wanted to do. It's all I've ever wanted to be. And to do that, I need to use diabetes as a friend, not as an enemy. So when I embraced diabetes, I opened up the door to allow myself the opportunity to be a professional athlete. And not everyone wants to be a pro professional athlete. That's fine. But to do what you want to do, use it as a friend because it's going nowhere, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. I just want to, some people ask me, what does it take to be a professional athlete? So I kind of took back my diary from last year and looked at what it took. So last year, I did 32,000 kilometers. That's 20,000 miles over the year. Um, that's over 1,000 hours in the saddle. Um, but to make your dreams come true and to be a professional athlete, the most important part is you. Um, no matter what you want to be, the most important part of any dream is yourself. Um, Limitations exist to scare us. They are placed by those who are worried and scared of your potential. Um, and the only person who has the right to put a limitation on yourself is you. So if you want to limit yourself, that is perfectly fine. It is okay to do what you want to do, but don't be afraid to take that limitation away because like, until you jump, you don't know if you can fly. So you may as well try it. And if it's not for you, then, then that's fine. But don't put a limitation on yourself or most importantly, don't allow others to put a limitation on you. Um, with the team, I've stood up and talked to so many people. Um, I get the opportunity to not only do what I love in riding a bike in every country in the world, but I get to talk to people like yourselves. And I was speaking to Chris, who's uh, from the Futsal, and I was just saying that um, I have this opportunity. I have a platform now. I want to use that platform as a professional athlete to not only benefit me, but to benefit everybody in the diabetes community. Um, one life at a time. Like, if you put a smile on someone's face, if I influence one person to test once more a day, then that has positively impacted somebody else's life. And to know from walk away from every situation, to know that you've made one person smile, you've made one person's life better, that is so humbling. And that's why I put myself in a platform where I'm contactable, uh, reach out, interact with me because, you know, people, certain people have different answers and that might be the answer to your question. So until you ask it, you never know. So 
I'd like to take this opportunity to say thank you very much to the guys who have reached out to me. Um, and to those who haven't, please do. Um, if there's any questions, I'd love to, to hear from them. Um, for myself going forward, um, Team Nova Nordisk is a privilege. Um, as I said, 16 professional riders with a development team in the process as well. Uh, we also have a junior team, so we have a great pipeline of professional or to be professional athletes. Um, if there's any youngsters out there who aspire to be professional cyclists, then let me know. Something I can do, you know, I'm kind of inside now, so. <laughs> Might be able to blag it, but uh, do what I do. I had no idea when I started where I'd be. I mean, I started cycling in 2016. We've just started 2019 and I've raced in the World Tour numerous times, Commonwealth Games. I've been in the breakaway in the World Tour. I finished two Milan San Remos, which is one of the five monuments, which will mean nothing if you don't know anything about the monuments, but they're big races. It's like one day Tour de France kind of thing, if that might still not make sense. I appreciate that, but um, <laughs> if you do have any questions, then anybody? Mm, oh God, no, someone else. Yeah, okay, <laughs> perfect. Thank you. Yeah, it was fast, eh? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's gone from my mate sort of not knowing much about diabetic cycling to now telling me how you guys are doing on the different Oh, wow, that's good. Keep up the good work. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. I think I saw another hand. Was there anyone else up the top yet? Are we going to see you in the Tour de France? And when do you think it might be? Um, Personally, I want to be in the Tour de France. That is the ultimate goal, to be on the start line of the Tour de France. To be on the start line of the Tour de France in an all-professional, all-diabetic professional cycling team is like the pinnacle. That is where I want to be. We need to, a lot of steps before we get there. There's also other races that we need to do before. Uh, there's also two other Grand Tours. It'd be nice to do as well. So. Um, I don't know, watch this space, but we're steadily getting there. I mean, this year we had four guys in the breakaway at Milan San Remo. That never happened, and we did it. And we had mentions from people who have been skeptical about the team before, but now they're starting to, we're picking up pace, you know. We're, we're getting the ball rolling, we're getting that momentum, and that's what we need. So we need to get more results. We know that, and it's not for a want of trying. We've got more confidence than ever. We've got a stronger team than ever. So, yeah, watch this space, but we want to be in the Tour de France. Yes. Um, do you talk to each other in, within the team about your um, type 1 diabetes and does it affect you, um, do you find that it affects you in different ways? To be honest, with 16 riders with type 1 diabetes, the last thing we want to talk about is diabetes. And that... <laughs> but it's true, you know, do you know, I mean, especially the youngsters in here, it, it's pretty full on, you know, when you've got, well, everyone living with type 1 diabetes, it is pretty full on. And you know your stuff. They know their stuff. It's nice to see how they manage and how I manage, but my management is purely for me. And it's so individual. So my management is worked on by myself, by my medical team at home. So uh, I have the most fantastic medical team in the Isle of Man. They've always helped me out. Um, they given me solutions when instead of saying you can't, they've been like, well, let's find a way. So find that way. Um, we, don't, we, just, we normally talk about football, you know, that, like different sports, <laughs> like, so it's, or food. And going back to Mohammed um, earlier, I eat a lot of food. And that is why I ride a bike, because if I didn't, I'd be like, I don't know, I'd be not fit for cycling anyway. But uh, <laughs> now we talk about, you know, it's just a group of mates, really. A group of mates that ride bikes and get paid and, you know, travel the world. So it's, and it is not as glamorous as it makes out. I mean, I love it and I wouldn't swap it, <laughs> but I haven't unpacked the suitcase in two years. So it becomes a bit full on, but I wouldn't swap it for the world. I mean, this opportunity is fantastic. I mean, I often get asked, would you go to Team Sky? I'm like, well, if I was good enough, maybe. But the idea is that I'm happy with this group of guys, and I would much rather get these guys and us to help other people. You know, that is so important. Um, we are a platform to show the world what is possible with diabetes. And with the help of Nova Nordisk and, and our team, I mean, to... I'll probably get a few laughs in a second, but inspire, educate, and empower. Everyone around the world affected by diabetes is so crucial. We go to countries where insulin isn't like a normality. We've uh, 
We raced Toro Rwanda earlier in the year. I didn't personally go. I was racing in Abu Dhabi, opposite end of the spectrum, I know. But um, the change that we see that we do, the campaigning we do over there, the work that we do over there, we've got promises from the government to improve the diabetes care. So we go and we don't just race there. We go to sort of empower people there. So we, the governments have uh, promised whatever they've promised, but, but we're there to work, you know. We're not there to just ride a bike. We, we are there. And that's so good because you see people at the bus asking questions and there's like people with type 1 who have never really, who've been diagnosed a couple of years and they've not really had something to smile about. They see the team and then all of a sudden they see, oh, actually, yeah, okay. Like, it's not a, a death sentence. It's something to embrace. And for me, it's the best thing that ever happened to me. Honestly, the best thing that ever happened to me. And that is because I am where I am now, but also because it gave me the tools and the ability to pick my own destiny. So, anyone else? Yes? Are there any other track clubs in Victoria other than Nova Nordisk? No, there's no other professional cyclist that isn't with Team Nova Nordisk. So you've not moved on to other teams? No, so we signed a Hungarian rider, Peter Custor, this year. He was with another team last year, was diagnosed in the summer, and then he came to us. So we tend to pick up these guys if they come, but it's very rare that someone of that age would be diagnosed. So um, I'm not saying it couldn't happen, but it, we have everyone. We've cornered the market. <laughs> <laughs> There's one up. Um, Dexcom. Yes, so we use CGM and we use Dexcom. We're kindly and very appreciatively sponsored by Dexcom, which is great because it means I can continuously see what, what's going on. Uh, situation like in the race at the weekend, if, if you haven't seen it, go on to the Team Nova Nordisk website um, or their Twitter. You can see my CGM trace from 300 kilometers. Um, it looks like a roller coaster, like a real ro roller coaster, like the fastest roller coaster in the world. But um, you have to adapt to these situations. So for me, without the Dexcom, it wouldn't be possible to gain that level of insight, and that is crucial to all of us. Yes? Um, I'm a cyclist as well. Oh, wow, fantastic. How, how do you find, I'm not, I don't have diabetes, but I'm fascinated to understand how you manage nutrition and how you manage nutrition. Okay. Because obviously, it's just so important with fuel and building it to depending on the road. And yes. Like Eat a lot. So... <laughs> It's, it's not too dissimilar, you know, if you put me on a bike and you put A, another cyclist on a bike, and you tell us to go in a straight line until we run out, we're both going to run out. We're both going to deplete fuel. So for me, that's where diabetes is great because I've always had this thing where you need to refuel because your sugars are going low. Or not necessarily sugar-based, but I know what my body is doing. I know what my body's saying to me. So I've got this tool that says, okay, Sam, you might need to take some food on now. So for me, it, it, it's an enabler. It helps me. Um, whether that's scientifically factual, I don't know. But, I mean, it allows me to know, okay, Sam, you've not eaten so much an hour. I mean, we work on, like, 60 grams of carbs an hour when we're racing. So uh, it's a lot of, lot of food to take on board. So um, with, like, with racing and the carb intake, it it's pretty much goes hand in hand. I mean, like... When you ride, there's nothing you want more than like a big like piece of cake, and I still get from my from my mum like, oh, can you eat that? And she says it, and she's like, oh no, what have I just said? Like, why have I said that? And I'm like, yeah, because 16 years ago, 17 years ago, when I was diagnosed, like they were told that they couldn't eat cake because people didn't really know anything, and now my mum has been so long without having to look after me that she's still kind of like stuck in the past. So I'm kind of like trying to educate her. He's an he's an iPhone, Google. There you go. But again, without my parents, uh, it wouldn't, or any of this wouldn't be possible. So they're fantastic. And, and I actually had them at the end of Milan San Remo for me. So that was really nice to, to see them there shouting and cheering. I couldn't, couldn't miss them. They're very loud. So. Yes? So I also use Dexcom for okay. cycling. Yeah. And what you just said, it gives you an advantage over your non diabetic mates because you can see when your sugar levels are plummeting. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily say that diabetes was the advantage, but I, <laughs> but I, I get what you mean. I can, I can see it, and like they're not running out of, they're not going into sugar low. They just need to refuel. But for me, 
I need that because their body does it without having, they've got a Dexcom in their brain. They don't need, they subconsciously have a Dexcom. I just don't, so I get mine externally, which for me is okay. I mean, why put a mountain there? Why put some, a roadblock in the way when I don't need to? I mean, if, if okay, right, that is where I want to get to. To get there, I need to do this. But why say, oh, but then this, and then this, and then let's just get on with it and do it, you know? And it is so easy for me to be positive about it, but that's because it's my job. But I can understand where some people are coming from, where we might have had some negative stories that have turned out positive. Um, but I can understand, and it's not all plain sailing, and there, but there is no silver bullet or whatever. There's no magic. There's nothing, like, I mean, and that's why I employ you to look at the, the Dexcom because we're not perfect. Like, everyone seems to think that Team Nova Nordisk have this perfect blood sugar which goes, ooh, that's n couldn't be farther from the truth to me. Yeah, every situation's different, every day's different, and um, riding a bike doesn't make it easy, but um, it's not impossible, you know? Yes, Jen. So on a stage race, we have two days. We land two days before the race. A one-day race, you're the night before. So if we're flying to, like, for example, when I did Commonwealth Games, we went to Australia, but we had to be there two weeks before because of the situation and the scenario and getting into the village. Um, it becomes not a nightmare, but I have to work on experience, and it's only now that I'm starting to get this experience of traveling long distance and sorting out. But each time I know that, okay, this happened, so I kind of keep a mental note as well as an actual note on my training files and everything, what I reacted to in that day. So next time I go, okay, well, I've been to Australia before, but this time I'm going to New Zealand, so what, are the com what can I compare between them? And then I've got this wealth of knowledge, and that's why I say be brave, because you do know the answer. And sometimes it happens, like, yeah, stuff happens, so it's stuff instead of the other word, but stuff happens. <laughs> And you've got to get on with that, you know? You can't, it's, we, I'm the worst because I do feel sorry for myself a lot of the time. But then I've got to realize how grateful I should be for the situation I'm in. I live in a country where I get access to medication. Um, I have all the tools. I have people who can help, you know? A, a, a tweet away or a phone call away or a text away, anybody that you could possibly need. And I, I think that goes for anyone in this room. You're probably one or two people away from every answer you ever need. So. Uh, use that wealth of information. There's people out there who have done what you're about to do, or there's people who, yeah, might know the answer to what your question is, like I said before. So if you're about to travel, and you know someone who's just traveled, then why not compare and ask? So. I remember years ago hearing that um, Gary Mabbott had to have his sugar levels really high before a game of football yeah. to stop him dropping during the first 45 minutes. Do you have to do a similar before? No, I mean, I don't know. I just, I, I keep between, figures are tough for me because there's some stuff we, we can't discuss too many numbers, but the range, the range that everybody knows, that is the range, so, you know, it's like <laughs> where I want to be between the whole race. So that range is the range, yeah. The, <laughs> have I said enough, you know? But, but you know, it's, it's kind of, I don't, there's, there's, every race is different because, like, I might race 300k, which is seven hours, which is a lot different to a 150k race, which is four hours. So um, I tried to stay in the range, and with the Dexcom, that's perfect. So you use all your information to see that in different races they might drop quicker, or yeah, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty sort of standard what happens unless you do in Milan San Remo. That's where it all hits the fan. And that's because there's so much pressure on the race. It is such a big occasion and I suffer massively from nerves. I mean, it's more nervous for me to stand here than it is to ride 300 kilometers. So I suffer from adrenaline issues. So not suffer, no, I don't suffer, but um, adrenaline does come into the question. So you need to measure that. And the, the two times I've had readings like I had in Milan San Remo, and Milan San Remo, and Milan San Remo last year. So now I know if I do Milan San Remo next year, a bit more information that might help me. Yes. When you're doing these races, do you have people that are kind of looking at your diabetes as well within the team as in, I don't know, doctors and things which are important as well? 
Well, we always have a doctor with us. Um, we tried last year in Tour of Utah to have live feedback to the car where the doctor is, but it got to the point where we're like, okay, you need to take a gel. Okay, I need to take a gel. When you're low and someone, your mum tells you to take some, <laughs> the next thing is radio off. But <laughs> it, was, it was a situation, I'm sorry, Peter, if you see this, but um, so we were in America, and every time you start a stage race in America, they do the national anthem. So everyone's off the bike, helmets off, and I'm like, what is going on? And then, uh, and that's no disrespect to them, but when you've got someone in your ear going, take a gel, take a gel, take a gel, and it goes to everybody on the team, take a gel, take a gel, and everyone's like, oh, the national anthem's going, what do I do? So um, we don't, we're kind of like in charge of ourselves, I mean, that's just the way it is. We have a lot of analysis afterwards, so all the Dexcom data will be fed back to the medical team and then they can look at it, but we're kind of like given our freedom in terms of we use our own medical team at home, so, because um, that's where we are, we're based. So um, the data is always there and it can be compared. We're working with like training peaks to sort of see if there's any collaboration with what happens in a race and that sort of stuff, but. Apart from that, no, it's kind of like yourself, which I think everybody, and especially everyone in this room, would, would want, you know, you want, it's your baby, it's, it's yours, so when someone tries to kind of like step on that, we get very like territorial, don't we? I think I'm interrupting lunch, so sorry about that. But uh, <laughs> come and ask me questions, come and speak to me, I'm here to answer them all, so thank you very much, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>